You know, Alfred Hitchcock couldn't be not accused of nepotism. His wife was a, a script doctor for a number of years, for a number of his movies. He had, would have cameos in his own uh, important movies, which became a staple. But his daughter, who was a very solid actress, eventually had bit parts in several of his movies. And to me, she more than fit the role. You would never know this was Alfred Hitchcock's daughter because it came across like a British kind of Jane Wyman with a little bit of uh, uh, Ellen Corby. So today we're going to be talking about the very talented and the very cerebral Pat Hitchcock O'Connell, or Pat Hitchcock. Now, Pat Hitchcock was an English-American actress and producer. <coughs> Pat Hitchcock. She was the only child of English director Alfred and the film editor Almer R Reville and had small roles in several of her father's films where the most substantial appearance being in Strangers on a Train. Now, she said in published reports, her mother being a kind of a script doctor and editor and her father being a director had a strong influence on her decision to pursue her career. Now, born on July 7, 28 in London, uh, they were the Hitchcock's only child. The family eventually moved to L.A. in 1939. As a child, again, Hitchcock knew she wanted to be an actress and made her first on-screen appearance as an uncredited extra alongside her mother in Sabotage, 1936. In the early 1940s, she began acting on the stage and doing summer stock. Her father helped her gain a role in a Broadway production of Solitaire, 1942, and she also played a title role in a Broadway play, Violet, in 44. After graduating from Marymount High School in L.A. in 47, she attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London and also appeared on the London stage. Now, in early 49, her parents arrived in London to make Stage Fright, Hitchcock's first British-made feature film since emigrating to Hollywood. Pat did not know she would have a walk-on part in the film until her parents arrived. Because she bore a resemblance to the star Jane Wyman, <coughs> like I mentioned, her father asked if she would mind also doubling for Wyman in the scenes that required danger driving. Now, she had supporting roles in three of her father's films. In Stage Fright, 1950, she played a jolly acting student named Chubby Bannister, one of Wyman's school chums. Now, her biggest role to me in the great performance, Strangers on a Train. She had numerous key scenes as Barbara Morton, the sister of Anne Morton, played by Ruth uh, uh, Roman, the lover of the put-upon Guy Hings, Farley Granger. Uh, now, in this movie, she basically has all the best one-liners talking about uh, the uh, Guy Hings' wife, who was eventually murdered by a guy he meets on a train or doing a crisscross murders. He said, I'll, I'll murder your, your wife if you murder my father. And of course, uh, the, uh, the, the Farley Granger character never does it. But there's an important scene where uh, uh, the, the murderer sees Pat Hitchcock wearing the same uh, cat's eye glasses as the murdered uh, put upon what he called extramarital wife. And he passes out in either uh, danger or in guilt. Now, her next key role in a Hitchcock movie was as Caroline in Psycho. Uh, and it stands out for a lot of people because in the first few minutes of the movie, it's establishing territory. And in this role, she she notices that Marion Craden, played by Janet Lee, is nervous, and she offers to share her tranquilizers, having received them from her mother prior to her wedding night. Mm. Inside, you know, Hitchcock's uh, weird humor. Now, Hitchcock, again, uh, was an extra in the film Sabotage as well. Now, uh, uh, Hitchcock also worked for John Nigolosco on The Mudlark in 1950, which starred Irene Dunn and Ali Guinness playing a palace maid and again was cast as a maid in the first episode of the 53 television series Life with Far Father. She also had a bit part in The Ten Commandments in 56. As well as appearing in 10 episodes of her father's half-hour TV program, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, she worked on a few others, including Playhouse 90, <coughs> which was live, directed by John Frankenheimer. Acting for her father, however, remained a high point of her acting career, which she interrupted to bring up her children. Hitchcock has a small joke with her first appearance on the show. After saying goodnight and exiting the screen, he sticks his head back in the picture and remarks, I thought the little lady lady was rather good. Uh, didn't you? And I, she was a good act, like I said. She knew what she was doing and she presented it well. She also served as a producer later in her career, uh, especially for the documentary The Man on Lincoln's Nose, 
came out in 2000, which is about Robert F. Boyle and his contribution to films. Now, for several years, she was the family representative on the staff of Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine. She supplied family photos and wrote the foreword of the book Footsteps, Footsteps in the Fog, Alfred Hitchcock, San Francisco, which came out in 2002, by Jeff Kraft and Aaron Leventhal. A biography of her mother, Alma Hitchcock, The Woman Behind the Man, was co-written with Lorraine Buzoro and published in 2003. Now, uh, her personal life was very strong. She married Joseph O'Connell Jr., son of Boston businessman Joseph E. E. O'Connell, on January 7, 52, at Our Lady uh, Chapel in St. Patrick's Cathedral, New York. The couple had three daughters, Mary, uh, Terry, and Kathleen. Now, unfortunately, she died of natural causes in her sleep at her home in Thousand Lakes, uh, California, on August 9, 2021, one month after her 93rd birthday. Her daughter, Teresa, made the following statement. She was always really good at protecting the legacy of my grandparents and making sure they were always remembered. It's sort of an end of an era now that they're all gone. And the truer words have not uh, not been spoken. Now, again, the television performance, Alfred Hitchcock presents. She was in uh, season one episodes into Thin Air, The Older Sister, and uh, The Belfry. In season three, I Killed the Count, The Glass Eye. Uh, uh, Silent Witness and The Crocodile Case Season 4, The Morning of the Bride and Season 5, The Cuckoo Clock and uh, The Schwartz Metter uh, Clumy Method Again, she was on Alfred Hitchcock Presents on and off for about uh, 7 years so very uh, very interesting so, uh, excuse me, 5 years so ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have seen her in a, in a kind of a, a British comedy farce or a British mystery movie. She would have been done a grateful noir. Now, I always thought maybe she would take on Agatha Christie. There was some question if she had that temperament because she was kind of humorous, but a very cerebral actress. I basically believe every time I saw her in a, a Hitchcock movie, there would be more of her in future shows, but she was dedicated to her father's legacy. She was dedicated to her father's productions. And uh, to my knowledge, I don't know if any any Spielberg children have worked with him to this level. Uh, you know, Truffaut, people like that. The greatest director, in my mind, of all time, having his daughter on the set, not only as a good luck charm, but as a really strong character actress. I think she was she was quite good. But Strangers on a, on a Train is my top one of my top ten movies. It is a, an amazing the one-liner she's given. And for the early 1950s, to get away with some of those one-liner, one-liners, only Alfred Hitchcock's daughter could get away with that. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the latest of our screenshots from Remote Control Podcast. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening, and don't forget... Christmas around the corner, uh, treat yourself with a movie book, treat yourself with a TV book, or treat yourself to our archive here of uh, nearly a thousand entertainment-related podcasts of all genres. The audio version of my infamous uh, screenshots and remote control uh, columns for Brunswick News, uh, the Campbellton Tribune, and uh, the Northern Light. Thanks for listening. Bye.